All right, check it out, man. What's up? This your boy, Big C, Amir Sun. Got the sun shining down on me, you know what I'm saying? Taking a break from uh, doing my work out here to and fro, handling my business, you know? Been up from since 6 to 5 this morning. Got out the house about 6, and I've been moving, you know? And I don't get back in till like 8 or 9, and I do it again. It's beautiful. It's a blessing to be able to get out here and and, and I put this. I, this been in the works. I work for myself, so this been in the works for a while, man. I've been trying to figure it out. I finally figured it out, and it's working for me, man. I used to be bagging it up, cutting it, cooking it up, bagging it up, and opening up shop, man. Twenty years ago, you know, I'm from East Oakland. Um, it, it, the crowd was outside, they was waiting, I was a chef, you know, had a bunch of soldiers with me, and we all getting money, and, um, funky with the police, one with the police, funk with the niggas, one with the niggas, um, all this bullshit, you know, I got tired of that shit, man, and I seen the era of my ways. I was not operating like a man supposed to operate. I watched all the, most of the people that we were selling to died. Most of the niggas that was in that life, they died. You know, or got sick. Not only um, physically, but mentally. You know, a lot, of, it, a lot of people didn't make it out of that um, life. It was a trick waged on us. To get us is a deception to get us focused on this while real business was being handled, you know. So now we we we're pretty much out of that. The majority of my folks is pretty much um, on on point. What changed my life was going to prison, and then just I just said I ain't gonna let I ain't ever gonna let another motherfucker strip me and check me, and um, I'm too fucking intelligent to be caught up like this, you know? Dope case after dope case, gun case. Um, then they start getting into some other shit, you know, real life uh, ending shit. So I had to think, man, am I gonna continue to be a little boy? A little, uh, um, think like a, a boy? Or am I gonna think like a man? I have kids depending on me. I can't put myself in these situations no more. So I start reading, man. I, I study. When I go do them jokes, I study the Quran, study the Bible, the Torah. Um, I wasn't reading. Um, I remember Terry Woods and Dutch and all that shit. I read them right. I read the motherfuckers in like a day. But my books, I didn't read those books too much. I read strictly nonfiction. Because I was trying to fix myself, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to re-educate myself. I started reading the history. But I have all I was already a smart motherfucker, so I just started elevating my, my intelligence, uh, my information on on uh, on life. So it it eventually worked. It took some effort, it took some discipline, it took some um it took it took for me to really Changed my mindset. Once I changed my mind, I changed my life. But it really took discipline. I had to do it. I had to make plans, make goals, and I had to make short-term goals and long-term goals, and I had to do that shit, man, in order for me to um, be comfortable with with uh that I was going in the right direction. So I make these goals, healthy goals, healthy um. Uh, plans and I start going in the right direction. I start thinking better. You know, at first it was hard. Shit is always hard. My boy DB uh, Bedford out here in Oakland, California wrote a book called Emotional Intelligence. At first it was hard, but I had to get comfortable. He said, DB said, you have to get comfortable in the uncomfortableness of it. So I got comfortable in the uncomfortableness of it. I was patient. That patience kicked in and after a while, the shit became easy. I made a little step, took another step, and another little bitty step. 
Little steps. Like just going to get your fucking shit, getting out of prison. Like, shit, we didn't want to have ID on us because we didn't want the police fucking with us. Or, you know, we didn't give a fuck. Um, uh, different things. Little shit. So I started making those steps, going to the gym, uh, going to the doctor, uh, being mindful, going to the, planning to get a job, getting it, looking for a job. That was a job, and getting a job. Learning to live without the fast money. That was hard. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn how to budget my money and all that shit. Then, you know, you niggas talk bad about, oh, that nigga ain't got no money. Fuck them motherfuckers. Them niggas dead or in prison right now. Nigga had to get up out of that life, man. I had to figure that shit out. But it took a lot of respect. I had to respect myself. I couldn't go throwing myself. I'm a big dude. I couldn't go throwing my weight around. and I, I couldn't mob up at the job and slap a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I, I worked in social services. They come in, cuss you out, break your window, all kind of shit. I couldn't beat them people ass. I had to step back and let do the, take the proper procedures to um, ensure the safety of, of the surround, my surroundings. So I had to do what was, what, what I had to follow the law. You know? I had to be a man, man. I owed it to my kids to, to, to man up. I owed it to myself to man up. So, you know, about this conscious community, I, I, I look on this internet and I, you know, I just look to, because I drive a lot and I want to listen to some good information. And I found a couple videos. I found, I like the guy, Sarah Sutton Seti. I've, I've been listening to him a couple times throughout the years. Um, I don't really follow nobody. I follow a lot. But um, I, 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 I look at these guys' videos, and I like what I heard from um, Sarah. The first time I heard Young Pharaoh was um, the other day when he was talking, um, calling Farrakhan a bitch and um, just saying all this. Why? What kind of person are you just because a brother thinks a certain way you call him all his name and, and hope he die and all type of stuff. And um, so I started, I was like, what kind of dude is this? So I started looking at his video and he has some sense, you know, he, but the culture of the youngsters is very disrespectful and very undisciplined. And um, that's, that's dangerous. We ain't gonna get no, you are not gonna get nowhere in life being disrespectful and undisciplined. If you're gonna do it, do it to everybody all the way. Watch what it gets you. Don't just do it and sometimes you can get away with it. You know, I, I, I was taught, don't say nothing about it to another man unless it's in his face. Unless you called him and hollered at him about that. You know what I'm saying? Cause you, nine times out of 10, a hundred percent of the time, of the time, you don't even know that man. You know what I'm saying? You might be, um, you might be commenting wrong. You got, I got a wrong perspective of what's going on. You know, so I, I see the, I see young Pharaoh. I see all these youngsters. They bitter. They, um, they think somebody owed them something. Their parents haven't raised them. They're mad at their daddy. They they mad for being in poverty. They mad for being um and uh um you know the black experience is 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 painful. You know what I'm saying? I understand them, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, the 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 generation this generation miss those old grandmamas. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no old the old grandmas. Well, she, grandma, man, grandma.